day, Crystal Maiden here for the finale of Knuckles Chaos. Oh great. I didn't wanna I didn't wanna play through Marine Madness as charming. I wanted to only play through Amazing Arena as charming. But I guess this is the perfect opportunity to show you exactly what I mean when I say that Charmy can't be played as a regular Sonic character. Because again, this is a very platformy level. You're constantly jumping around. But you can't jump around as Charmy, so you can only fly. There are loop -for loops outside of Speed Slider, because I just saw one here. But they're very, uh... They're very underwhelming, I guess. There doesn't seem to be a proper loop to loop because you just land on a floor that breaks. Charmy's animation seem unfinished. Like, he just... Like, when he moves forwards, he only seems to have one frame of animation. He just moves forwards like he's a, a glitchy character that's never supposed to be in the game. And, and of course I mentioned how weird he looks when, when he's on the moving platform that brings you into the next level. I don't think I show off his idle animation, so I can't really comment on that. And, and see, that was a perfect example of how wonky Charmy is to play as a Sonic character, because I just got hit by a spring, and with any other Sonic character, I would hit a spring, and then hold down, and then I would get sent moving really fast, and then I would just roll down a slope. But you can't do that with Charmy. He just stops. Thankfully, you can break item boxes with Charmy by flying into them. So he's not all that hampered by the fact that he can't jump or spin dash. If you're moving along the ground, and you hold left or right and tap the A button, you'll dash along the ground a little bit faster. The badniks in this game look really weird. Like, I have a hard time describing what the badniks of this game look like. Especially the ones in this level. Like, what, what are they even supposed to be? Normally Eggman's robots look like animals. At least in the classic games, anyways. Here, they just look kind of like abominations or something. But finally, we come to the boss of Marine Madness. Every boss is preceded by a cutscene that is basically an FMV, so I guess it's... I guess the 32X really is a more powerful version of the Sega CD. Because the Sega CD was all about FMVs. That's why it... That's part of why I failed, because it was all about FMV games, and not actual games. But anyways, this boss is really boring, because... The first part of it, you're just wading around and dodging the polygon shield, because it'll hit you. And then you wait for Eggman to show up, and... Ugh, that was so annoying, like, I was flying up to him, and I wasn't damaging him, and only now can I damage him. I was sort of dreading fighting a boss fight with Charmy because his flying controls are really unwieldy. Like, you can only fly in exactly eight directions, so it's not really all that smooth. But thankfully, I just repeatedly flew into him and he died. So, Charmy actually beats boss fights too, and wow, that's a shitty victory animation. I mean, look at him, he's literally just turning multiple ways. Like, he looks like he's a lunatic. He's just moving his head back and forth to the side. Compare his victory animation with Vector's. I mean, you can barely even... This game doesn't really do a good job of showing off Charmy's personality. Because, normally... He doesn't really feel all that real in this game. Because, again, he feels like a glitchy debug character. It feels like he didn't have nearly as many animations and stuff. But, in, in Sonic Heroes, Charmy B is characterized as a hyperactive little kid. And 
he annoys his teammates a lot because he's he's wacky and kind of screws up a few times. And he likes teasing his teammates. So he's kind of a brat, but he's not he's not evil. He's not an outright jerk. He's nice enough, I guess. It's just that he's very hyperactive. And in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I talked about how little boy characters tend to be hated by the fan base. They're considered the scrappy. And Charmy B is a prime example of that. Tails manages to avert it. Because he's... Because... I'll have a hard time remembering exactly... Well, I guess he's nice enough, but he's, he's useful. That's the thing. That's right, I got stuck in the wall when I first played this level. Oh my god, I'm like, really? So, most of what you're seeing of this level is my second take. Because on my first take, I got stuck here. I could not do anything. I was just stuck in the wall, moving back and forth. Lesson learned. Don't fly with Slarmy up... <laughs> Did I just say Slarmy? Don't fly with Charmy up to a slope. Whatever you do, don't fly upward. Don't try to fly into a, a sloped wall, because chances are you'll glitch through it and then be stuck in it. I don't think I've ever been stuck in a wall in a Sonic game before until that point. I, like, people say that Sonic CD has collision detection issues. I never got stuck in a wall in Sonic CD. I didn't fast forward that elevator. It just it went just went faster than normal for some reason, which I appreciate. But yeah, it, it's kind of sad that the most memorable parts of the game to me are the really annoying boss fight of a botanic base zone, and the two times when I clipped through a wall. Like the most memorable parts of the game for me were were a really horrible boss fight and getting stuck in a wall or clipping through it. That is not the part of the game that you want to be the most memorable. Because mo for the most part this game isn't all that memorable because every level has five acts and so every level the game starts to blend together after a while. I mean the levels themselves are unique enough. I think it would be fine if the game only had two or three acts. But because it pads itself out, it starts to feel repetitive. And it makes the fact that there is no challenge in the levels all the more boring and mind-numbing. The game's fun to play. It's, it's fast enough, and I enjoy playing it. It's just that, you know, you, you can't die, you can't get crushed, you, the platforming isn't that difficult. Normally I'd, I, w I wouldn't say that it's the perfect newbie game because the ring tether mechanic is difficult to get used to. And it doesn't really appear in any Sonic game ever again. So you get used to it uh, and if it's your first Sonic game you're never going to see it again. I thought that the mini boss before was the boss, but actually this is. The pre-boss cutscenes are pretty underwhelming, like, there isn't really much going on in them, there's no dialogue or anything. I like this theme, too. Oh my god, I keep trying to fly into him and it doesn't hurt him. So I guess you have to... So now you can fly into him to hurt him. That's consistent. It looks pretty easy to get hit here. And I almost died because I didn't go back to collect a ring after I got hit. But because I had the blue ring power up, I just collected that ring and then I got all my rings back. Like I said, the boss fights in this game are pretty easy. Like, I was dreading the rest of the boss fights after beating Botanic Base Zone, because that was the first boss I ever fought in this game. Charmy, his ability to throw his partners is really pathetic. Like, he can barely throw them at all. And it's justified because he's so tiny. 
Oh, great. It's this boss fight. I at least like the fact that you can change characters before, before fighting this guy, because it would have sucked having to fight this boss fight with Charmy. While he does sort of break boss fights, he's also pretty, uh... Again, his flight control sucks, so I'd rather just be able to jump into a boss. This boss fight is absolutely horrible. And the reason for that is that you're expected to accurately time hitting the stage randomizer. You have to hit it at exactly the right time so that the X is highlighted. And that will damage Metal Sonic. If you don't hit it at exactly the right time, then it'll highlight a number instead. And the number that- the, the attack that Metal Sonic does corresponds to what number you land on. I had a lot of bad luck through this boss fight. I kept on landing on numbers instead of hitting Metal Sonic. So, I'm gonna end up showing off pretty much every attack he has. This boss fight took me forever, and I had to do a lot of editing for this. There's no... I don't think there are any rings in this boss fight, but it doesn't really matter because, again, you get hit and you lose your partner, and then he respawns after a while. So it's easier to die here, but it's not too difficult. The boss music is intimidating enough, it's, it's yet another theme that is repetitive because there's not enough to it. But yeah, this is easily the... I have a hard time deciding whether I hate this boss fight more or Botanic Base's boss fight more. I guess I'd rather play this boss instead of Botanic Base because at least I can deal with this with enough save stating. Just... Why do they expect you to accurately time jumping into that thing? You accelerate so slowly from a standstill. So you pretty much got to walk right up to the red bumper thing. And then just jump into it. It's so hard to time it correctly. So a wireframe surrounds that ring. That seems kind of unnecessary. It's just trying to show off the graphics, I guess. I'm not really sure what happened in that cutscene. Apparently, what happened is that Metal Sonic was downloaded into a new, more powerful form. Well, supposedly more powerful. To be honest, he's really slow and he, he just attacks like a typical giant mecha. Like, all he had to do was jump into the weak spot and it gets hit. So, it's pathetically easy and really... I can sort of understand why he did it because Metal Sonic in his normal form was too damaged to attack you. Because he's... Metal Sonic in his normal form is very powerful on his own because he can fly all over the place. And he can surround himself with fire and move at Mach 4. He can do all the same attacks that Sonic can do. He's very powerful in his regular form. So it really makes me wonder why did he take over the stage randomizer and attack that way? I guess he was only following Eggman's orders. And uh, if it was up to him, he would have just attacked in his normal form. This boss fight is not called Metal Sonic Kai. That's just a fan nickname for it. According to the manual for Knuckles Chaotix, Metal Sonic Kai is actually the name of Metal Sonic in his regular form in this game. Metal Sonic Kai being applied to this boss fight is just a, a fan nickname theme, but I think it works perfectly. Because this boss fight does look, this boss really does look cool. And I think that Metal Sonic Kai is a pretty, a pretty awesome name for a boss. Especially for this boss. It's just that actually fighting it, this boss is really easy and... And this part is the most boring of all, because it's literally just you wait around for the laser to stop being there, and then you jump into it. The most annoying thing about this boss is that it can back up to the left so much that it, that it gets past the wall, and so you can't attack it. 
It's just like in Zelda 2, where the boss fights will go off the edge of the screen and then you can't attack them. So you gotta move to the other side of the screen to lure it towards you. So, the best way to deal with this boss is to spin dash jump at it. Because it always backs away when, it, when you're moving towards it. But if you spin dash, and then jump, you'll move at it fast enough that it won't get away from you too much. Attention game developers, don't make weed around bosses. It's just inconsiderate. At least you start out Metal Sonic Kai with rings. Because then it would have been... Well, it still wouldn't have been hard, but it would have been kind of... You, you don't get to fight that boss at all if you don't have Chaos Rings when you beat the game. The only way you can see this credit screen and fight the final boss of the game is if you beat the game with all Chaos Rings. But you only get 25 tries... You only get 25 tries to get all of the Chaos Rings in the first place. So, after a certain point, you're pretty much doomed to get the bad ending. So you can't blame me for using safe seats to beat every special siege in one go. But yeah, that was Knuckles Chaotix. And it plays a pretty good credits medley at the end of it. And I'm not normally a fan of credits medleys because it feels lazy, like there's just one original beginning and then it's just like, oh, let's play a bunch of songs from the sound test. But this medley is pretty good. And Sonic and Tails finally show up at the end of the game. Which is also taken as more evidence that they were originally meant to be in this game. It's like, guys, you're kind of late to the party here. So I think this is a fun time waster. I mean, Again, it's, it's really easy, there's... You don't ever have a threat of getting crushed in the levels. There's no bottomless pits at all. And you have to get hit multiple times to die. And the platforming is really not that difficult, and... There isn't, isn't really that fast either. Because it's all about the corkscrew loops, it's not really about loop-de-loops or slopes. That's why I think that Speed Slider is the best design level in the game, because it feels like a Sonic level. But even then, the biggest problem it has with level design is that it's too open and there's too many different paths you can take, but it's too hard to figure out how to get to the goalposts, because there's so many different ways you can go. So I'm always lost when I play through the levels of this game. Other than that though, it was pretty fun. I didn't find it bland at all. And even though you even though you have five acts for every level, which pads out the game. And the level design doesn't always change all that much, but I feel like it was different enough. Like, I didn't really feel like it was all that repetitive, replaying a level five times, because they're not replaying the exact same level. There's very clear level design changes that makes it feel different. The soundtrack is mostly good, except that most of the, sound, most of the songs are really short and repetitive, like it's on Drift. Like, I, like I love bot Botanic Bass. I love door into summer and the graphics the game looks pretty good and the story the story is pretty bare bones like Knuckles goes to the carnival islands to stop Eggman and everyone has their own reasons for being there it's pretty bare bones I think this is a pretty good game it's just that it's kind of overrated and it's not horrible it's not boring but it's also, like, I don't know. I liked it more than I thought I would, is basically what I mean to say. Stay tuned for the extra part of Knuckles Chaotix.